let's talk about some other vitamins. So people are, most people are familiar with vitamin D, which we obviously get from the sun um, and fish, but they don't know too much about vitamin K, uh, specifically vitamin K2. Can you talk a little bit about the importance of vitamin K2 and particularly the role it plays in um, calcium placement when taking vitamin D3? Yes, thank you. Now, let me give you the big picture first. It's close enough and it's an approximation if I'm one or two, three percent of, we need calcium in our body. Approximately more than 95% of the calcium is in the bone. 5% or less of our calcium is in soft tissue calcification. We need them, like the cartilaginous of my ear like that. So we, there are places we need. So when we take calcium, it is presumed that the calcium go to the bone but calcium does not automatically go to the bone. And the first discovery was vitamin D helped in the calcium to go to the bone from Tufts University. That was the first one. But vitamin K1 was first known for clotting factor. And then the vitamin K2, apparently when you take this vitamin K, it's also another lipid vitamin, you take them in, they go to a protein a reaction and the protein will be able to take the calcium to go to the bone. The protein is called osteocalcin. So you need the vitamin K2 to, to take the calcium to the bone. Now we're hearing as a public that if you take MK7 or MK4, then you would not have calcification of the artery and then the calcium will go to the bone. If you take those vitamin K2 and vitamin D, and there may be other parameters too, they basically help the calcium to be put in the right place. The right place would be greater than 95% in the bone and less than 95% in other tissue. What would be an example that this would be out of kilter? The immediate thing we can think of out of kilter would be calcification of the artery. Not necessarily a good thing, but it's more than that. What would be some other example? Kidney stone biliary uh, calcification or calcification of the joint. You see, they call osteophyte. They are in between and it causes inflammation. Like if you read about people with uh, osteoarthritis, you see that? So those will be the example. Now that I mentioned vitamin K2, the role of a, a GG. If this is a molecule of vitamin K2, again, it looks like this. That's the head. It's a quinone. It's manoquinone 4, a head and it has a tail. When we eat vegetable, the entire is called vitamin K1. Vegetable does not make K2. Only fermentation processes make K2. So vitamin K1, so you have a saturated tail and the tail is a phytol from the plant. Phytol saturated tail and the ring is a quinone ring. So that's phyloquinone. That would be vitamin K original. But when they discovered a manoquinone, so they call the original vitamin K as K1. And so when you take in the vitamin K1, right at the gut, it cuts this off. So now the minimal amount, the proper amount of K1 goes in, that would help you to have proper clotting factor when you're tear in your body. Mm -hmm. And those two gentlemen that discovered them already got the Nobel Prize in the 1930s. What is new and unknown is only it had hemostasis. It only have a right amount of K1 go in, but otherwise it crop off at the gut and the tail is flushed away in the gut. And then the ring goes in. So now the ring, the ring is actually manadione. So that goes in. When it goes in, it will go to about 25 or more organs in our body. I enunciate that because most material get into our body, it goes to the liver and it get metabolized there. But this but particular vitamin is site specific, which means it's all over our body. All right, we have more than 25 organs, but this is to substand 25 organs is approaching all of our body. So it goes in, and then when it go into say to the heart, to the liver, to the kidney, to the adipose tissue, for example, when it goes there, then it's looking for this organ and tissue there for a tail. The tail is precisely the GG molecule. That molecule is here. If you look, it's got four double bond. I'm holding at one double bond. If you see that, if I rotate them, you have four double bond. You look for that tail. This whole tail is found in the cell. It will then stitch onto the, the to that uh, a ring there. Once you do that, that's MK4. All the other manoquinone are fermented in the gut. MK4 is the only manoquinone made in our human body. 